Welcome to the video from the digitallifestyle.com. This video we're going to have a look at this Acer Aspire 11, uh, Acer Aspire Switch 11V. This is a replacement for the, uh, the Aspire Switch 10, which has been out the last couple of years, and is a two-in-one. So in this video I'm just going to have a look at some of the specs and how, some of the performance, how it goes, and a bit of a look at the physical design as well. So, like I said, it's a, um, a two-in-one, which means it's got a detachable keyboard, which I quite like. So, this is in tablet mode. Oh, this is as a tablet, I'll use it as a tablet now, and you see even Windows prompts us if you want to switch to tablet mode. And there we're using it now as a Windows 10 tablet, and because it's, it supports um, landscape and portrait mode, so you can use it as a true Windows tablet uh, in tablet mode, and then you can switch around the orientation like that. So a really um, quite a nice form factor for that. Uh, we'll have a look at the keyboard in a sec. So I'll just tell you some of the ports we've got on here. We've got uh, volume, SD card, micro HDMI, micro USB and power. Um, so you're going to need a little USB Go adapter to, uh, to get USB devices into there. And on this side we've just got uh, a power button, uh, volume and a Windows key. Uh, so you see it's fairly thin, it's about a centimetre and um, there's a bit of a bezel on there, there's a bit, uh, a bit of bezels, uh, but nothing too much. There's no Windows key at the bottom here, which there was in previous versions, as I mentioned, the Windows key is up there. Um, with Windows 10 it doesn't matter because you've always got the Windows key handy there. I do actually prefer it on the keys, on the, on the screen, but that seems to be Windows 10, that's uh, not happening anymore. So. For tablet, it's quite it, it, it's a it's a nice tablet. Um, I think it's about 760 grams in weight uh, from looking at the official spec. Uh, I quite like that as a as a tablet, and I, it works quite well like that. I use my Surface Pro 3 as a tablet quite often. But where this is different from the Surface Pro 3 is it's got a full keyboard, not even the cover one. It's a full size uh, keyboard. And there's a spinning hard disk in there. I'll come to the specs in a moment. So that gives it some weight and it feels quite chunky. There's also a USB 3 port here at the side as well. So to dock it, you just drop it onto the hinge and it's sort of magnets guide it in and click it in. You can have it in different ways as well, like that. So you can have it like for presentation modes like that as well. But I guess most people are going to use it as a traditional laptop. Like that. So now we can come out of tablet mode, it'll do automatically if you want it to, and we've got back into normal laptop mode. The screen should say as well is 11.6 inch. Um, right, so what I can tell you, now we're in, in, in laptop mode, there's a bit of extra weight, 1.6 kilograms now, and that weight has a a 500 gig hard drive in here, no, no battery or anything like that, but it does mean that it's nice and sturdy, it doesn't topple over when you start touching the screen, so if there was no hard drive in there this would be really light and it would topple over because it hasn't got anything like a kickstand, but, so that's okay, that works, uh, that works quite well. Other specs we've got uh, a, f a 1 megapixel front camera and a 5 megapixel rear camera, which isn't actually uh, too bad the camera. So there's the, the camera which is up on this top corner there, which it doesn't look too bad. And we can switch it around and you can see me there. The keyboard itself, well, isn't the greatest keyboard I've ever used. The keys are a reasonable size. There's quite a lot of travel on them. Uh, and I wouldn't like to do a huge amount of typing on it, but it's not too bad actually. Um, and the trackpad itself is quite nice. You've got two fingers scrolling on there. Um, so the keyboard itself is reasonably good. Yeah, it's not designed for a lot of heavy work, but um, for this form factor, I think it's reasonably good. You've got the F keys on there. There's no key, numeric keypad or anything like that. And you've got brightness controls and volume controls on there as well. So this has got a Core M processor in it, with 2 gigahertz and 4 gig of RAM. There's a 64 gig SSD drive in here, and like I said, there's a 500 
gig drive in there. So the actual the 64 gig SSD is actually quite fast, and that makes the whole thing feel very snappy going in and out of apps on Windows. Um, the performance of it from that side is is pretty good. One thing out the Core M is um, is fanless, so there's no fan sound. It's it's really quiet actually. Occasionally you can hear the the 500 gig hard drive spin up in here, but if you're just using your tablet, there's no audio at all. What um, I have found with the Core M, and so I'll, I'll load something up, let's load Minecraft up, is it does get quite warm, especially around here, because there's no fan in it. And then what will happen is there'll be a bit of throttling on that, uh, to, on the device to stop it overheating. So it's not really an ultra fast machine. Uh, as you can see here using Minecraft, it actually uh, performs quite well. Um, and occasionally I just found it would slow down a bit and that's maybe when it got hot because currently it's cool and you see it's very smooth everything's working fine on there um, I'll let it run for a bit and we'll see if it what happens when it when the processor starts to get a bit a bit warm but anyway the SSD drive does make it feel nice and snappy on there so like I said Windows works very well on there and um, Windows 10 works really well with this kind of device Uh, battery life, I've been um, sort of experimenting with battery life, I've had about between 4 and 5 hour battery life, depending on what you're doing, web browsing, maybe 5 hours. Gameplay, like we're using Minecraft here, um, maybe about 3 hours, so I found that on my Surface Pro 3, playing a game like this would actually hit the battery quite hard. It's not as apparent on here, um, so I think that's not bad, so we've got 2 hours it's saying for 79% which I think is pretty reasonable actually, and it seems to be fairly accurate as well, that's pretty much what, I, what I've been getting for it. Um, price wise it's about 450 quid. Um, there's lots of different versions of these as well with, with all these kind of things, so depending on which process you get. This is running the, uh, the screen at 1920 by 1080 There is a 720p version one which is a bit cheaper as well and um, there's one with 128 gig SSD. So I think the highest price I've seen is about 700 quid for the highest spec one, the lower spec, so like 400 quid, something like that. But this one, I think it's around 450, which could get you a Surface 3 without a keyboard, um, or maybe there's uh, some of the convertibles out there. So for value for money, I don't think it's pretty, that bad, really. I think... Um, it's very similar to other specs at that price point, but I quite like the form factor on this. One of the, um, the criticisms of the, of the Switch 10, it was a bit cheap feeling. This feels a bit better actually, because it's got a like, aluminium finish on there, uh, which is quite nice. I think it actually is aluminium, it's not just plastic. It's plastic on the rest of it. And it feels well constructed. Um, and I wouldn't mind using this as a tablet, that's fine. And then you, when you put it on here, it's, that's what they would say, it's very lappable because the, the hinge means it doesn't tip over too back and it's quite well balanced. So it's not going to, to tip back when it's on your, on your knee. Sound I've tested comes up here, out up here. It's not particularly loud, but it's kind of what you expect for a tablet. I'm just seeing if this is getting hot now. It started to get warm around here, not too bad actually, maybe this uh, Minecraft isn't taxing that much after all, it, it seemed to be earlier on, uh, maybe I should do something with it, I don't know, play the game a bit and see. Um, I wouldn't like to do any video editing on there, anything really heavy on it, because I think that's when the, it would start to get hot. I notice it gets hot when charging as well. But overall I like this, I like this device, I think it's a nice little two-in-one, I like the tablet mode, I like the, the dock, it's fit. It's not an ultra premium device like a Surface Pro or a Surface Book or something like that, but you're paying sort of half the price almost. Um, it's a compact little device. It's quite heavy. I think the, hard, the spinning hard drive accounts for that. Except Windows 10 works really well on it. It supports Cortana. So overall, I think it's a nice little, uh, nice little device. It's an incremental improvement, I should say, on the on the previous switches. But I like this one. I prefer this over the big sort of traditional uh, laptops. I like this form factor. Uh, I think it's uh, it's nice to have the option of a convertible and a and a tablet. 
Right, so thanks for watching this video. You can read the full review on thedigitallifestyle.com and uh, you can see more on our YouTube channel.